Okay. I'm going to move the agenda. Okay. Four one. I'm going for one. Jeff's going for one. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Salaries, and then click on. I gotta meet somebody in front of my number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kate got gun. So she said just do all this in one and you still abstain. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we have two votes still. Yeah. If you guys could just approve the consent agenda, that'd be great. Yes, she had to fly to DC for work. 20 cents an hour. And I've never heard of the national universal system. Oh. Yeah, so we're going to because they have their big offices for all of the Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've really been bringing the onslaught because I got that at home as well. And then there's been like full page ads and every Sunday's Argus, which is not cheap. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. No pressure. So who's the sergeant? Because that's not sergeant major. Um, I need somebody at seven. I gotta go home. Yes. 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 It was a 55 I was and it, and it, it was the, long. And it hit the upright way up. I mean, it was, and it, the game was essentially over, over yeah. and I'm just sitting with Peggy and talking about it. And that's not usually what I'm saying. Yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah. In the scheme of things. It wasn't like the soccer player that missed the 25 yarder for Nebraska. Yeah. Oh. oh, no, he's not a soccer player. Oh, I thought my no, husband said they picked him up. They, he hasn't played yet. Oh, okay. Tell him there's still hope. Okay. I think he'll play this week. Well, this was the guy who's from Norfolk that brought him in. He was at Air Force. Hi, Jackie. I mean, oh, oh, I do yes. remember them saying that. Yes. So. Okay. This is funny. Brett, we were talking last night. Brett, he wears wear leads in Carmel. Yeah. And he was a good man. Nobody. And I was like, oh, did you? And then we got a five-year penalty and moved him back. Yeah. Did you go out and watch any golf? Oh, yeah. I played golf Saturday. I didn't want to play. I didn't want to play. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't realize. 
Which is fast. Call the meeting back to order. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to item number five on the agenda, do I have a motion for approval of the minutes of the meeting held September 9th? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor of approving of the approval of the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We didn't have anybody to address the board this evening. We move on to approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Um, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approval of agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose, same sign. Motion carries. Now the good news report. Thanks, Steve. Good evening to all of you. Tonight we're proud to host Senior Marine Corps Instructor Lieutenant Colonel Brian Harwell and two of his cadets from the Lincoln High School JROTC program. They recently learned of a very prestigious designation earned by their unit that sets them apart as one of the top 20% of units in the nation. For the first time, they've been designated as a National Naval Honor School. They're here tonight to tell us a little bit more about what that means to the unit, and then the students will tell us what that means to them personally as well. So, Lieutenant Colonel. Thank you, ma'am. Esteemed members of the board, good evening. And uh, thank you very much for having myself and two of our finest cadets uh, here tonight. First of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about designation of National uh, Naval Honor School. It is, as Ms. Conrad said, a very prestigious award within the JROTC programs. It's based primarily off of um, numerous volunteer projects. In this last school year, we racked up uh, an accumulation of over 1,900 man hours of volunteer service within our program. Uh, as well as over 60 uh, community events in terms of things like color guards at uh, sporting events, Augustana University and other community events uh, throughout the, the greater Sioux Falls area. In addition, we had uh, numerous um, ROTC scholarships as well as general scholarships for college. So grades and academic criteria account for a lot of our standings, a lot of the percentages that went into racking and stacking of all the schools. So the bottom line is, uh, again, as Ms. Conrad pointed out, we fell in the top 20% of approximately 260 plus uh, Marine Corps JROTC units throughout the nation. And it is the first time in the 19 years of our program's existence that we've had this highly esteemed designation. So. I'm gonna stop talking at that point and turn it over to uh, a couple of my fine cadets. First of all, first uh, Cadet First Lieutenant Harley Robinson. Go ahead and come on up here, Harley. And they'll let you uh, know what it is about the program that they're enjoying the most. Um, as Lieutenant Colonel said, I am Cadet First Lieutenant Harley Robinson. I've been in the program for now my fourth year. I'm a senior. Um, I joined the program originally because I wanted to be a police officer. And I stay in the program for that reason, but also for the reason that it's an amazing family. Um, like Lieutenant Colonel said, we do a lot of volunteering and a lot of it, and it's a lot of fun. We also do color guards and we also hang out with each other, which is how we're a family. Um, I'm involved with color guards, air rifle and drill team. We do it all. <laughs> uh, I also do out of school activities such as police explorers and other things. Um, Anything else? Yeah, I mean, we're a family. That's what it's all about. Cadet First Lieutenant Riley Dinger. Again, as Lieutenant Colonel said, I am Cadet First Lieutenant Riley Dinger. I am the drill team commander for our unit. I originally joined the program four years ago because I was so interested in the aspect of drill and being able to march in a disciplined manner. I stayed because like Robinson said, it is a family. Everyone gets really close with each other and we enjoy 
knowing that you have a friend that you can look forward to that isn't just a name, it's a brother or a sister. <coughs> I am also in drill team, I'm in color guards, and I'm in the rifle team now this year, and it's one of my best classes. Thank you. Any questions for me? I just would like to commend, I love going to school on Wednesdays and seeing everybody in their uniforms. And uh, you, I saw the, I believe the rifle team perform last year at the basketball <coughs> game. Was that the rifle team, I think, yes, last winter? And it, it was amazing, just the timing and everything and all the dedication and time. So thank you for all you do and making our school district proud. Your leadership shows because they're a great group and there's nothing better than watching you guys at, perform before games or at the associated school boards. Uh, you guys have done the color guard for us a few times and it's very, very impressive. I'm impressed with you guys, impressed with what you what you do. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one last thing, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the extremely <coughs> hard work. I'm just the pitch guy up here in his second year of this program, but the heart and soul that's been behind this program has been my Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Scott Backen, there at the school. He's been there for the past 16, he's going into his 17th year now. And he's really kind of the formulation of everything. This is the culmination of all his hard work over those years, as well as, of course, the cadets. And one last final welcome and thank you to our new principal, Dr. Laura Rader. She's, ever since I met her since day one early on in the summer, She's given nothing but 110% backing to the program, and it's really uh, nice and refreshing to have that sort of su support. So thank you. Thanks. I just wanted to add, I think um, we, we sometimes forget about <laughs> extracurriculars such as this program, and when I listen to you all stand up here and talk, your confidence and your clarity is amazing. Um, and that you don't just get overnight, that's something you guys have clearly worked very hard at, and those are skills that will serve you so well in your future. So are you both seniors, right? You said you're both. So I just imagine the great things that you guys are going to go on and do, whether it's your police officer interest or whatever it might be. I think the communication and the confidence and just your poise will take you a long ways in your future. So best of luck to both of you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, moving on to conflicts of interest, we have one presented for board member Tolkien. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor of um, approving the conflict of interest for board member Tolkien signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed signal sign. Motion carries with one abstention from board member Tolkien. I should also mention board member Parker um, this evening is traveling for work, so is unable to attend. We move on to item number 10, approval of the consent agenda, items A through E. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, num number 10, A through E, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll take items A and B under 11 together, since board member uh, Parker is absent on the supplemental consent agenda. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries with two abstentions from board member Mickelson and board member Ryder. We'll now move on to reports of the superintendent. Thank you. Uh, tonight's, uh, tonight's reports, first of all, our, our first report is the 2019 state accountability report. Here to deliver that report is our assistant superintendent, Dr. Teresa Boyson. Good evening. Good. Good evening. Thank you for listening to our 2018-19 school board report, our state accountability report that was released on Tuesday. September 19th, um, our state report card shows our progress um, across the state on equal accountability measures. When we look at our report card,
So. Thank you. Technical difficulties. You might need to be more quicker, Dan. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It just it should go. There we go. Got it. Student outcomes. <laughs> um, district strategic plan. Uh, it follows under student outcomes, district priority area one, statement one, we will provide a rigorous, effective and engaging curriculum for all students to emphasize growth and reduce the achievement gap. That state report card, as I said, was released last Tuesday from the Department of Education. It follows, follows under the ESSA guidelines, ensuring that each district is measuring student growth and progress equally across the state. Um, it's designed, the report card's designed to be parent-friendly, engaging in their child's education while providing transparency um, on how well that school's doing in educating all students. We use multiple measures to, when we look at that report card. Um, the Smarter Balanced um, is used for English language arts and math in grades three, eight, and 11, and science for grades eight, five, and 11. We use a multi-state alternative assessment for those students um, with significant cognitive disabilities. And then we use the WIDA access for our EL learners, our e English language learners. On that report card, on that report card, there's eight different categories that are highlighted for the district and for all schools. And tonight I will share some highlights on the, that report card. Each school, ele um, elementary, middle, and high, are scored on a 100 point scale system and that gives them their school performance index and that looks at areas progress in English language arts, math, um, English language learners. It looks at that college and career readiness at our high school level and it looks at our attendance rate. Are those are some of the highlights. So if we look at student performance, We had a presenter in here today. I, I'll blame that on him. <laughs> but if we look at student performance, overall, the district um, is doing well. Remember, we have 10% of our students that are English language learners, and we get five years to get them up to proficiency. And so we broke out the student performance data into an overall district score um, as we compare to the state, and then we pulled out our English language learners and looked at our district performance and compared that to the state. So on the left side of your graph, you'll see that English language arts performance, and all students scored at 50.8% um, of those students were proficient, and then uh, as opposed to the state, the state had 53.9% of their students, of the students proficient across the state. If we pull out our English language learners, the district score is at 55.2% of our students proficient and the state scores at 55.4. So the state with 2% English language learners and the district at 10. So really we're right there at that state performance. And we did the same with math. And when you look at that math performance, um, all students are 44.3% proficient as compared to the state at 45.7. Again, pull out our English language learners and we're at 48.5% proficient as compared to the state at 48.6. So outperforming the state in that area, math and really close to that EL performance, ELA performance. And then we'll look at student progress. And student progress is a three-year comparison. So we take that growth of our students over a three-year time, and we know if we have our students um, together for three years, we can make a difference. And this is all students' data, so it's not, we didn't pull out our English language learners on this data, but we're at 58.3% of our students are um, making progress or growth in English language arts over a three-year period of time, and the state's at 58.1. 
and we look at math, we're at 51.7% proficient and 51 for the state. So nice growth at that progress over time. And well, our next area is graduation. And that graduation rate, um, when we look at graduation rate over the last three years, so since 2015-16, it's increased over 3%. So we have that nice increase, that gradual increase over time, and the completer rate has also increased. But um, on the slide there, it shows you the graduation rate over the last four years, and that um, this year we're right at the state level at 84%. Um, last year, we were at 83.85. And we're still working with the state um, to, for, on some student appeals, student by student, um, to make sure we get everybody the credit that's earned for them. And we're expecting that to come up over 84% by the, t by the end of um, the assessment office. Nicole works really hard with getting Doug and Nicole to get, make sure we get every student accounted for. The next area is college and career readiness, and that college and career readiness, we get points in two different categories. We get on the left side of the screen, you see that assessment readiness, and assessment readiness is comprised of the Smarter Balanced results, the ACT, or the ACCUPLACER, and then the NCRC. So students have to be proficient in those measures. Um, on the left side is that coursework readiness, and students need to have two credits um, in the same CTE concentrator or a dual credit class or an advanced placement of a score of a three or higher. And so for each one of those, we get a half a point, but to count in that college and coursework readiness final score, we, this, we have to have the students count in both buckets. And um, coursework ready, on that assessment readiness score, we had, um, we're making, uh, we stayed steady on that assessment readiness score. And th these scores are for our 2018 graduates. So not the kids that graduated last spring, the year before. And so um, we expected to stay on course there, but through the year last year, we implemented the NCRC assessment and we expect to see that hit um, our report card next year. And so we would expect that assessment readiness score to um, increase. And we put the projected score there at the end of, we have 42% of our kids assessment ready the last two years and we would expect it to be up in the high 50s next year. Just because of that NCRC, we picked up over 200 students through that assessment. And we'll give that, that was through seniors last year, we'll give it to juniors this year, and that's coming up. As is the fall now, instead Correct. of spring, which was a good move, I think. Yes, yes, and that was a, um, an ask from the buildings, and it is, the fall is a good time to give that assessment, so it's not packed in with the rest of them. And then on the coursework readiness, we had 44% of our students coursework ready, and we increased that score to 52%. Um, through this last year, just really identifying how those courses are coded um, within that state system. And remember to get that coursework readiness, they need to have a dual credit course, ACT, um, and then they need to have or two credits in the same career cluster. And there's 16 career clusters, and we have a rich offering in Sioux Falls. So if I take something in construction and something else in culinary arts, I'm not getting two <coughs> credits in that same career cluster, but I have a wide variety of experiences. And that's where we have to really um, wrestle with ourselves and say, do we want to get the points or do we want to allow kids to be well-rounded and have that exploratory experience? And I, I believe that's the direction that um, you have given us is that we want students to be able to have those exploratory experiences to really see where their passions are. So we continue to work through that though and to make sure that we have all the opportunities that students need in that college and career readiness. And next we have our English language learners. Um, our, our English language learners have five years once they come to us um, to become proficient and last year 
um, during the 18-19 year, 45% of our EL population either exited or were determined to be on track, and that's a 14% increase over the previous year. And that slide shows that we had 29% of our students on track in 17-18, and this last year we had 37% of those students on track. And, and then met expectations, they were either on track or exited and we increased from 31% to 45%. So nice growth with our EL students um, in, uh, in our program. And the last slide tonight is um, that school environment and that's our attendance. And when we look at that attendance um, and really looking through that information, we noticed third quarter last year really took a dive on attendance. And so we would, we would say that was probably the weather last um, spring. And statewide noticed the same decrease in attendance. So we just really watched that and hopefully we're just gonna smooth right through that um, third quarter this year to increase that. And every building is rated on their report card. And there's different designations with that. And last year through ESSA, there were, um, they made those initial school report card designations. You could be a comprehensive support school and that would be any Title I school that is in the bottom 5%. Um, you could be a targeted support and instruction school improvement, and that's any school that has a subgroup that's performing below their all students group or an additional targeted support school, and that would be somebody that's on a plan for multiple years. So through that report card process last year, Sioux Falls District had eight schools that were identified as targeted support and improvement. And we look at that report card and through that report card, um, this last year, three of our schools came off. They're still designated, but they cleared their report card, meaning their subgroup that was identified, um, they increased their score. So those report cards were cleared and we had one additional um, school go on for targeted support and we give them support through the curriculum and assessment office and the state also provides some structure with that. So um, lots of support for those schools. So preliminary data shows that Sioux Falls School District is continuing to show strong academic performance on the 2018-19 accountability report card. Graduation rates increased for the third consecutive year hitting 84%, so a 3% increase. Um, English language arts and math when compared with a base student population were outperforming the state in that area. We showed growth in college course readiness with an increase of 8%. And our EL students who exited or that are on track was 14% over the prior year. So the report card looks good for Sioux Falls. We'll continue to monitor all those areas and provide feedback to you with our progress and support. Stand by for any questions. Oh, and thank you for adding. I had asked Dr. Boyson regarding what we do for the schools that are um, designated as TSI, and, and I appreciate you adding that information to the report. I think that 14% increase uh, for our ELL students, that's amazing. And um, plus, is that the same time we the WIDO score was increased by 0.5 at that time frame? The year before, yes. The year, so, yes. I mean, there was a higher exit yep. um, point for this, those students, so we were meeting that. So, um, congrats to our staff and the students who worked so hard to get that um, so accomplished hard. and so forth. And thank you also for, um, with the NCRC, I think that we'll really see a huge increase in our um, our college or preparedness of our students and so forth score and moving that to the fall was very smart because I just remember when my son took it at senior in the spring, I'm sure he was about ready <laughs> <laughs> to be out of there. And so to put it for the juniors so then they can still be thinking about, you know, if they want to go, what they want to do, if they want to tech school, they want to do college, if they want to go to work, yeah. get some more um, tools in their work box to look at that. So we even had an employer ask for that. So and that was great for the kids. Good progress, and I would echo what you said about um, having to have two classes from the same cluster really is an unfortunate measure. Um, when you look at the number of classes that we offer and the wide interests of our students, like you mentioned, some may be interested in tech school or the workforce or college, and so 
to try to pigeonhole somebody into taking two consecutive classes that are, you know, in that same cluster, I think really is a disservice to our students. Um, they may find that they didn't enjoy the class that they thought they were going to and want to take a totally different um, pathway and they should have the ability to do so um, and still earn credits towards graduation. So um, I fully support not trying to force that type of a um, direction on students and letting them have that, that free will to really select the classes that are the most interest to them and we'll take the hit if that's what it means and we'll still work on preparing them as best we can for life after graduation, so. Thank you. Seeing no more questions or comments, um, do I have a motion to approve the 2019 State Accountability Report? So moved. Second. A motion second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now the CIP update, please. Okay, the second report this evening will come to us from uh, Jeff Kreider. But before I turn it over to him, I want to take a little bit of a bird walk, if you'll allow me to. It was um, the, the night of the tornado. And I would tell you that at 1.22 a.m. that morning, I called Jeff Kreider and said, uh, can you help me look at the roads? And I know Jeff didn't sleep the rest of that night, and I know he worked the rest of that day. Um, but what a lot of people might not have known is into the evening on Wednesday night, we didn't have power at three district buildings. And so Jeff didn't sleep very much, I think about two hours that next night, and still um, was a tremendous at his job at work. And I think a lot of us think we, we go above and beyond and we do. Jeff Kreider went way above and way beyond what the expectation was. So Jeff has been a, has been a star in the district and I, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thanks to Jeff and to have what, what he did. He would see it as just had to do his job. I see it as um, just absolutely meaningful work that our district needed and, uh, and you came through. So. We have a lot of partners that were part of that solution. No so. doubt, no doubt we do, no doubt we do, but uh, I know where the point person was, so thank you, I know, Jeff. Um, my contact at Excel worked through that whole night and he was out in the field and I, we were directing people to places, so. Well done. So Now you can give a report. Okay. <laughs> well, my my report tonight is gonna be a little brief and that's it's more about uh, hiring architects for the next phase. Um, as you know, we've, we've got the, the high school moving forward. We have the middle school moving forward. We've completed Memorial. So now we're moving forward with uh, several projects that will be started um, in the next couple of years. So these four projects, Horseman, Laura Wilder, Cleveland, and JFK, these are kind of bigger projects that we really don't have an architecture of record. So we put out an ar architectural RFP for these projects. And uh, so we're, we're moving forward with these. But um, Horseman, just so you have an idea of context of the schedule, Horseman, we're looking at bidding, you know, working on the design this fall and bidding January, February, March, Laura Wilder in the same time frame. Robert Frost is also in that time frame, but we're gonna be doing that in-house, but they'll be, since we did the last three projects at, at Robert Frost. Um, so we'll be doing that, and those three are the ones that'll be bid this year as part of that overall plan. Cleveland is part of this. Uh, we're gonna start the design after the first year. We've gotta stagger this so we can get these done so I have some time to devote to those. Um, and then John F. Kennedy will be bid on December, probably maybe um, November of 20, December 21, somewhere in there, or 21 of November and December. So that's, a, that's down the road a little bit, but we're gonna get the design going and get that ready to go. So anyway, uh, the report, we did uh, issue an RFP for these projects on August 9th. Um, we solicited an RFP by advertising, web posting, sending out to 16 local architects. Uh, the proposals are due on September 2nd, uh, and we received 10 proposals to review. The val an evaluation uh, committee represented the district value of the proposals. Um, we looked at the following contents, and that was required specifically in each proposal, and review, and that was project approach, experience and qualifications, 
personnel experience. And that's so we know who's gonna work on our projects so we don't have a, a firm that just comes in with all these projects and we don't have anybody that's worked on any of those projects associated with our project. Makeup of consultants, that's structural, mechanical, electrical, and civil. Uh, project experience for, the, for, the, for all the consultants and the firms and project schedule and plan and also fees. So those were all important parts of this. And after review and evaluation man would, um, was TSP was selected with a fee of 5.5% and that's percent of the construction cost. That way we can bring things in if we have maintenance things that we want to schedule with. We're doing the walkthroughs now so there might be a couple little things we add. Um, Laura Wilde Elementary is EAPC. We have not worked with that firm but they, they look good. Um, their fee of 6%. Cleveland Elementary is Coke Hazard with a fee of 5.25%. And JFK, John F. Kennedy Elementary, uh, Architecture Incorporated with a fee of 5.5%. So the, the fee structures include all architectural and engineering services required for the project. And the fees are in line with the, what's in the estimates. Um, they're actually a little lower than what's in our estimates. So. We're, on a, we're starting on a positive note. And these four projects are have been identified and are part of the bond that was passed in uh, 2018. Um, so this report, we're gonna, we're gonna ask for um, authorization for the present business manager, business manager to enter in the contracts for the AE services for these respective projects. I just wanted to mention next month we're going to technology willing. We're gonna hopefully have Ben do some flyovers so we'll see a, a drone flyover of the construction site and I can explain what's going on and, and give you an idea what that is and maybe get some pictures of the memorial completed project as well. So that's our hope and uh, I know Deanne will be in the background if I can't quite get it to it. <laughs> I think we will. So. He did, a, he did a one initially about a month ago and it looked pretty good. So he's got a pretty good drone, drone camera. Things are progressing. Uh, the rain we had slowed us down a little bit, but uh, as of last week, it, everything has dried up and people were proceeding pretty good. So um, then I, another update we'll be having is we received most of the bids for the Jefferson that were yet to come in in phase three and we're reviewing those uh, end of the middle of this week. And uh, my initial thought is they, they all came in pretty good. So we'll give you some updates on that uh, later on that. So once we get a firm grasp on it, but I think everything is trending very well. Could you just um, high level remind us of what we're doing to these four schools? I think sometimes people forget that as part of the bond it wasn't just a middle school and a high school. And so when we look at all the different projects going on, we, we have memorial finish, but high level. High level? Yeah. Forest Man will be adding classrooms. Okay. So it's for more capacity at Forest Man, and we'll also be do, redoing the office area for um, security. Um, Laura Wilder, we're gonna be putting an elevator and some offices, uh, an elevator and a staircase. That's about all. And we'll be putting that on the back side of that building. Cleveland. There's a lot going on in Cleveland. It's There'll be a new gymnasium. Um, there's a lot of dominoes. The, the multi-purpose room that we have now will become the art room. The, the old gymnasium will become the multi-purpose room. And there's some dominoes. And we, we plan on doing window replacements and some of those things as part of this project. So the playground will be reconfigured. The whole piece will be starting to come into shape. And there's a lot of dominoes. That will probably take place over a two summer period. There'll be Construction will be moving in during the school year in some of those areas and there'll be some dominoes We haven't really sat down with the building staff yet to discuss how that's gonna all phase So there could be little tweaks of that But we need to coexist very similar to Mark Twain and when we had Mark Twain running we built a new school on that site, so There'll be some challenges that we'll have to overcome maybe do some temporary playground areas for him during that during that school year and uh, JFK is a, a new gymnasium. They'll be in that, I don't know if you know where the East parking lot is, we'll expand that, turn their existing um, gymnasium in the multi-purpose room, turn the multi-purpose into um, an, a music area. So that's out of a classroom pod, then we're gonna convert that into a standard classroom. So there are a lot of dominoes to both of those, but Cleveland by far is the most complicated and um, 
impacting yeah. a lot Some of this. Great changes though to uh, make, adding space to the um, buildings and giving staff and students more room to do some of the activities like in the gymnasium. Yep. Great, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second to acknowledge the results of the RFP process and authorize the president and business manager to enter into contracts with the selected architectural and engineering firms listed above for the respective building projects. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Well, I don't, I, motion, I did it for the motion. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to move that we go into executive session, uh, South Dakota Codified Law 1 25 21. Second. Any other questions? Sorry. I thought I forgot some. Scaring you, wake you up. <laughs> 